Hi, welcome to Orad, a channel dedicated to scary, creepy and paranormal on Ask Reddit. In today's episode, Night Shifters on Reddit, what's your scariest story? Working in a restaurant at 2.30 am some dude shows up and is just watching us through the front window. Seemed drunk at first, ignored him for a few minutes, turned back around and he had a huge freaking rock in his hands and lifts it above his head and slams it against the window shattering the outside layer. He then looks directly at us and says I'm gonna kill all of you. We dialed the police immediately and armed ourselves with kitchen knives. He wandered back to his car and sped off. The cops got there maybe 8 minutes later, seemed like 30 at the time, and couldn't find the guy. We were robbed at gunpoint a few nights later. I just walked out and never went back. I posted this somewhere else, but this is my story, I was an emergency dispatcher for the police department in my city, working overnights, when a woman called in to say her depressed husband had gone missing. She said he sometimes liked to go to a local, 1800s era, cemetery and just be alone. We sent two officers out to look for him, and they saw the door to the mausoleum cracked open. When they went in, they made their way through the very dark underground rooms and finally one of their flashlights caught the image of a figure. They thought it was the man just standing there, but it turned out that he had hanged himself from one of the pipes overhead, and was dead. The ceiling was so low to the ground that his feet were still on the floor. The officers hightailed it out and called back to say they had found him. This was late October in Maine. Very spooky. Was working really late one night doing emergency IT stuff. Walking around the office building, most of the lights were off and it's dead silent. As I'm walking by, this guy suddenly rises out of his cubicle like a demon gopher from heck and stares at me with what seemed like unnaturally wide eyes. It turns out he was just working late, and we had scared the crap out of each other. I worked for a taxi company doing quiet night shifts, one time a customer phoned in to say her hire was late and I had to tell her that I didn't have any bookings at her address for then. She swore me out and cut off the call. Ten minutes later she phoned back to say she found out where my office was and was coming down with her boyfriend and her brother, this was about 0230. At 0310 a car pulled up in front of the office and two men got out and tried to force their way into the office building, I phoned the police but the people left before the police got there. That was pretty scary. Used to work at an ice cream factory from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., second day on the job, this tenured line leader was trying to unclog compacted cookie dough from the machine. Used her freaking finger. It chopped off the end when it unclogged and started again because no one stopped it. I'm still fresh and new as in helping her out and learning. She jumps off the ladder and yells IT cut my gun dang finger off. Dot. I froze in fear, she pushed me aside grabbed all the paper towels and booked it to the ER. We found her fingertip in the ice cream catch a few minutes later and had to trash the entire batch and start fresh, just before my days off and I had to come back in the next day shorthanded. Obligatory edit, yes, we found the bit of her finger, cleaned it and put it on ice. Took it to the ER. She got it reattached. And I get it, shorthanded. Ah. I used to work third shift security in a neighborhood near a university. We often encountered some weird stuff, but mostly we just dealt with drunk college brothers and the like. One night it's nearly 4 a.m. so we're ending our shift and heading in when this old homeless looking man stops me and asks me to call an ambulance for him. I ask what's wrong and he's telling me he's having heart palpitations and suicidal ideation. I flag down a coworker who informs our boss and calls for the ambulance. I sit down next to the guy as he's laying on the sidewalk and let him talk to me. At first he's saying what you'd expect from someone who wants to commit suicide then it gets dark as heck. He starts telling me about a woman he stabbed because he asked her for $20 but she only gave him a few bucks so he murdered her. Okay, pretty creepy, but then it gets worse. He just starts going on about how he's raped people and committed arson and other horrifying stuff and I'm sitting almost alone with him while my coworker is several buildings down on the phone with dispatch. He starts telling me about how his mother used to have sex with her father and brother and that he saw that? and about how he's a crackhead. When the ambulance arrived he started cussing and yelling but at least I was free to go at that point. I understand it was probably at least partially the ramblings of a mentally ill crackhead but it was still unnerving. It's not every day a stranger confesses to you about murder and rapes he's committed. Also, I'm a young woman so I would occasionally get the super freaking creepy guys who would try to corner me on dark roads or follow me around. So that would get pretty terrifying. I used to be a bouncer at several different locations in the Toronto downtown area. I enjoyed working on the patio when I could despite not being a smoker because talking to people made time go by faster and hey, easier to get phone numbers. There was this one place I worked at that always had crazy crap happen. 
The patio was also a weak chain-link fence with some tarp thrown over it. The club was cheap, so the fence didn't cover the entire area so I had to be watchful of people trying to sneak in. One night, I felt lazy so I stood in the opening with my back to the street. I was talking to some people trying to kill the time. I felt some guy stand behind, coming in from the street. This wasn't too unusual, some people get turned away and when they see me, try to bribe their way through the patio entrance. I was having none of it so I puffed myself up, determined to ignore him until he gave up on me noticing him. After about 10 minutes of this, I started getting a bit creepied out cause the guy was just standing behind me without saying or doing anything. I turned around to tell him to freak off, but stopped mid-sentence. This guy was a bit taller than me, I'm 6 foot 2, kinda lanky, very well dressed. He was also covered from head to toe in blood. Like completely drenched. I thought he'd been in an accident so I dropped my tough guy act and starting asking him if he was okay, needed an ambulance, etc. He calmly responded, nah he's good. He just wants to find his brothers. I was like um, are you sure your brothers are here? He insists that they are here as they told him they'd be in X city, not anywhere near Toronto where the club is located. After his complete obliviousness to what city he's in, the fact that he's soaked in blood, and his intense stare, dude wasn't blinking, I called my boss up. When my boss appeared, I gave a quick rundown of what happened. He talked to the guy very briefly, then told him he'd assist. He went and got some patrolling cops. When the cops appeared, one of them lightly touched the bloody guy on the shoulder. That's when he started screaming incoherently and tried slashing at him with a small knife that had been concealed in his pocket. The cops, my boss and I subdued the guy until he could be cuffed and placed inside a cop car. The guy was screaming loudly and struggling to hulk out of the cuffs, as the cuffs cut deeply into his wrists, the entire time. To this day, I still have to clue what the heck that was about. Probably not what you're hoping for, but whatever. I worked overnight at a pasta plant during my teens. One night my dad showed up out of nowhere, he worked there, he was the quality control manager, and told me we were going home. No explanation or anything at the time. He just said they were shutting down production immediately and there wasn't going to be work for probably a few more days. Turned out some guy freaking killed one of his kids in the plant, probably by accident. It took a long time for the rumors to get back to me, but apparently one of the forklift guys was joy riding around the place, went under one of the overhangs, but had his kid in the thing with him, and that kid was standing up with his head out the top. Apparently he either was decapitated or his neck was broken, but either way he was killed. It was creepy how it happened in the place, and it couldn't have been far from me, but I had no idea. Also really terrible and horrific just thinking about how it could have happened. As a parent now it makes me sick. This happened a few months ago. I work at a grocery store overnights and everyone else who should have been there called out for one reason or another. I went out around 2 a.m. to smoke and I saw someone on sitting on the bench. I didn't really think of anything of it, figured it was just a drunk who was wandering around the town since there's a few bars down the street. I sat down and started to smoke and look at my phone. The drunk guy screamed at me as I lit a smoke. Hey buddy do you mind? My dog doesn't like smoke. I looked around confused as freak and didn't see a dog anywhere. I think your dog might have ran off somewhere, man. I don't see a dog. He stood up and opened up his jacket and he had a little pug in his jacket. I noticed he had a large kitchen knife sitting stuffed into his inside jacket pocket. He started to pet his dog and baby talk the dog with very slurred words. I put out my smoke and decided I'm not going to die for smoking next to a dog. He started singing Just Give Me a Reason by Pink and walking towards me as I was heading back in. Hurried the freak back inside of the building. It isn't a very vivid one, but is what I have. I work in a sleep lab, and I smoke. Before participants come into the lab I have to set up things, as the labs are used for other activities during the day, it's at a university. So I'm there, making beds, setting up the polysomnograph and whatnot alone. I take a break for a cigarette. It's about 10 p.m., normally fully dark. But it isn't. There's a bit of a weird orange glow in the sky. Strange smell on the air. No idea what it is, but work is work, I shrug and go inside. While I'm inside, I hear some weird noise from the outside world. Now. These are sleep labs. They are meant to be soundproofed. But some doors are open, and soundproofing isn't perfect. So I send some messages to my friends who know university vibes a bit better than I do, I'm not the 18 to 22 of that sort of scene. Don't hear anything for a while. Then get a message. There have been protests, they are letting off explosives at the university, the police are there but can't engage. 
I call participants, tell them not to come in. I find out apparently roads are blocked to and from the university. So, being a reasonable person, I turn off the lights and close all the doors, get in one of the beds and go to sleep. Roads out of the university were still lined with protesters when I left in the morning, but after about half an hour of convincing them that I was nice and they should let me leave, out all in one piece. Found out some of the explosives were about 200 meters from my lab. Good times. Thank you all magnificent people, leave your own comment and stories below. If you enjoy the video, considering subscribe. I pubic video every day. Until then, check out my other video.